Danny Eslick right there on the outside of that front row. Guy to keep your eye on him and who else but Jake Lewis after winning at Laguna Seca. This kid's riding high right now, so I'm expecting the best, possibly the best race of the day right now. And on that second row, J.D. Beach, Westby, and Gerloff, which of those three do you think have the best shot here? I think Westby's got something to prove. I think he's riding with Chuck's dad today, and I think he could really do something. The light is about to go out, ladies and gentlemen, and GoPro Daytona Sport Bike begins here at mid O for the Buckeye Superbike Weekend, a three-rider drag race headed into turn number one. And it's Jake. Darn, I think that's Jake Lewis, I think perhaps. You're right, Barry. It's a little hard to see there, but I'm pretty sure that's who that is. It's either Lewis or Eslick. We'll find out when they come through uh, the like keyhole. Looks like made a right, a move right, right back at him, it looks like. If that's who I'm, if that's who that is, it. A little bit hard to tell from our camera angle here, but we'll have that for you in just a moment. I can tell you this, that the start is currently under review. That's just to make certain that everybody's right where they need to be. And I do believe that is maybe perhaps J.D. Beach at the head of the order. We'll I see. Thank you. I think you're absolutely right. And, uh, Jake Lewis in second. That was like Danny Essex running in third right now, and that's gone in fourth. That is very interesting how that worked out right there. He must have got a really good start. Hopefully he was legal. I hope so. Uh, J.D. had a great run at Laguna Seca last weekend, running second to Jake Lewis. He's run second at Barber. He's going to want to try to break through and get a win. Let's just hope he didn't jump the start on this one. Well, because a penalty will be incurred, and perhaps if it's a, like a 10-second penalty in this class, uh, you're not going to make that up. No, that's, that's going to be a tall order right there. So. As you see, everybody snacking their way through Thunder Valley for the first time. Looks like we had a clean first lap so far. Everybody seems to have stayed on the motorcycles. That is a Yamaha extended service machine up front. And we're relatively certain right now that that is J.D. Beach, who has slipped up from row number two into the number one spot. That's what I think. Boy, he's got a lot to prove right now. He's got that the best bike out there with the... The Yamaha Extended Service Program bike with, with Gray's backing it. Um, he, and he hasn't been able to put that win in for him this year. And definitely JD's going to want to get that. And he's already got a little bit of a gap, and he runs it a little bit wide in the keyhole. But that'll set him up good for an exit down this long straightaway. Holy cow, it is on here at the Buckeye Superbike Weekend and GoPro. As I do, I've got J.D. Beach up at the head of the order. Pretty sure that's number 85, Jake Lewis, in the two spot, being pressured right now by Danny Eslick. Well, Gagne slipped up the inside of Eslick right there. Unless it looked like he was pulling out to make a move. But in turn to 32, Gagne said, I'm going to go on by him. And now he looks real racy and wants to get by Jake Lewis as quick as he can. Wow, we have right now four riders up front, and they're all so equally matched right now. It's the six of J.D. Beach, the 85 machine of Jake Lewis in the two spot. Danny Eslick, number 69, your 2014 Daytona 200 winner. And, uh, well, Jake Gagne and then Danny Eslick. And Eslick might just be kind of cool in his jets back there in the four spot right now, letting them get things sorted out a little bit in front of him. Could be. I think he's got his hands full with three Yamahas right now. He's leading, flying the flag for the Triumphs out there. He's the first Triumph on, in line right now, and he's coming under a little bit of a pressure from behind right now. Looks like that could be uh, could be Westby, could be uh, Garrett, Garrett Gerloff. Hard to tell from this shot. I got to give a shout out to Kyle Wyman right now. He has shown in that fifth spot. Kyle's doing double duty here this weekend. He's in the Vance and Hines Harley Davidson Series and running in GoPro Daytona Sport Bike number 33. Definitely in the thick of the hunt. He's leading that pack right there. That's Wyman, Gerloff, Westby, Blake Young, Jason DeSalvo, and perhaps Zimke at the tail of the field, perhaps. Well, it looks like there goes Jake Lewis. He makes the move on J.D. Beach as they come off that back straightaway, Barry, on the brakes. So now he leads it again as they go down into the turn 7-8 area. I do not think we've seen the last lead change in this 14-lap affair. Uh, there's, they're going to be passing it around, I believe, unless uh, someone like Jake Lewis can, can break away a little bit. That's not going to be an easy task, though, here, I don't think. No, it's a difficult track to do that. And in the background there, running in that fifth spot, that's Garrett Gerloff, and he's bringing Dame Westy along with him. It is, uh, it is Gerloff and Westby back there in uh, the fifth and sixth spots. 
So those guys want to see these top four start battling with each other. That'll allow them to close that gap just a little bit. They're not far off this, this tail end of this lead group at all. And they got plenty of time to make it happen and get up there. But I tell you, ooh, well now we got another move right there, Barry. That was a nice move by J.D. Beach. He stuffed it up the inside of turn two. And yet we've not seen Gagne at the head of the order yet, but he's ready to take the number one spot if he needs to. Right now they're two wide back there for fifth right now. It is a great battle ongoing here just like we anticipated. Oh, and Westby won that battle. That was uh, Garrett Gerloff running just a little bit wide in the keyhole. Just gave Westby a, a space of a doorway, and he caught three wide down here off the back straightaway. It doesn't get any better than that right there. Three wide action, and it is Beach. Uh, in the two spot, or in the three spot right now with Gagne now up into the two spot. Jake Lewis, your race leader. Gagne's got something for him here, Scott. Man, this is just a warm up of what's about to really go down and there's gonna be five guys going for it. And that double zero right now, I promise you, he's got something to say about all this. This is where I saw him ride better than I've ever seen him ride in his life. A couple years ago here and he was just slicing and dicing through these people. And now he's got four great riders in front of him, but can he do it again? So the 12 machine of Tomas Puerta and the 21 of Elena Myers both incurred 10 second penalties on the start. Everyone else deemed good. So for anticipating the start, Tomas Puerta and Elena Myers both will be assessed a 10 second penalty. That is not going to impact this race that you're watching right here at the top of the class. Boy, Jake. Jake Lewis is riding high on some confidence right now. And J.D. makes a move up on the second spot again. He likes that turn two, and he makes the move on Gagne. Puts himself in a position to maybe take over the lead off the back straight. But, but Lewis is riding high on some serious confidence after Laguna Seca right now, Barry. And he's going to fight tooth and nail to win this one. And, and Jake Lewis could care less who is second and third on the box. He would like to see that battle continue back there behind him and keep those guys occupied. But, oh, my goodness, everybody gets caught up in it now. We've been expecting the 32 of Gagne to come to the head of the class. Ooh, that road race factory bike has got some motor right there. He just drove right around the outside of J.D. Beats, down the back straight into turn five, break, put the brakes on him on turn six, and now he's parked right on Jake Lewis's rear wheel again. What amazes me is how the talent in this class continues to improve. These riders just get better and better every time we see them on the racetrack, particularly that man right there. He is coming off of a huge win in front of the uh, world uh, class, world superbike riders at Monster Raceway Laguna Seca. Number 85, Jake Lewis has the motorsport.com colors out front. Can he keep them there is the question. Uh, looks like a little bit of a gap appearing right there between that third spot which is J.D. Beach and Danny Essex right now. Danny may be struggling with that triumph just a little bit. We'll see. The guys behind him, Garrett Gerloff and, and Dane West, who don't want to see that triumph slow up right now. They want to get up there and battle with these leaders. He's actually had that little bit of a gap for almost the whole race. There's been a couple of times, Scott, he's been able to draw up on the third place rider. Of course, who the third place rider is has changed every other corner uh, throughout this one so far. Working it through the keyhole one more time, and it really number 32, Jake Gagne, is looking very racy up there in the two spot. He would like to have the race lead, and to my recollection, he has not led a lap yet in this one, but he looks like he's getting ready to make his move, and he'll go to the inside of Lewis. Can he hang on? He's got that line down the inside, and I tell you, that Road Race Factory bike, they've got it running really good today. Um, Gagne's made the best of that keyhole, put himself in a position to pull out of the draft and outbreak these guys in turn six. Now they better put a lasso on this dude or he'll take off. Yeah, because you know what was impressive, Scott, was the move was impressive, but being able to keep the machine down on the bottom of the racetrack and hang on to the spot so convincingly, uh, that had to be have, have Jake Lewis shaking his head a little bit. Yeah, and I think the, the pace is fixing to pick up a little bit now that Jake's up front. Um, we've got a couple of Jacks this right, but Jake Gagne is the man I'm talking about on the 32. He's going to want to redeem himself from what he happened at Laguna. She felt like I'm sure he felt like he had better, a better ride in him. But today is the day right now at Mid-Ohio, and he leads him as they come across the line again. Well, Jake Gagne did just have his fastest lap of the race so far, 128.957. So no doubt Gagne's bike is coming to him here. 13 laps to go, and the 32 machine, the Road Race Factory star at the head of the order right now. Well, Westby's disposed of uh, Garrett Gerloff again. Now he runs in that four spot right on the rear wheel of his 
Oklahoma partner there, Danny Eslick, as they make their way down now. It'll be a little bit of a drag race down this back straightaway. I tell you what, that Triumph's got some wheels on it, too. Look at him drive around the outside right now. He's going to take over that third spot. That was a power move coming up from down deep in the hole out of that corner right there for the Triumph. Oh, he brought Westby with him on that deal, too. So now Westby running right there. Now let's see if Danny Eslick can make any inroads into these couple of Yamahas that are leading him. Well, they'll be furling that white and green flag up and crossing them at the line this time to signify to our field that we are halfway through this all-out war and GoPro Daytona Sport Bike, it's a long way from over. Got to keep it clean right now, that little bit of a gap that grew. I saw Essex come out of the saddle a little bit as they applied the power down out of turn six, and that cost him just a couple of tenths of a second right there and with these two Jakes up front running. And I mean Jake Lewis and Jake Gagne, you can't give these guys that inch, they'll take a mile. And the two are really beginning to put a little bit of a gap on J.D. Beach and, and the um, 69 actually of Eslick. So a little bit of a gap beginning to form between first, second, and the battle for third on back. Well, if these guys keep it clean and they just kind of run that wheel to wheel, then they'll be fine. They might be able to make this break. Right now, Westby's the guy in double zero. He's going to be a little bit anxious right now as you can see that gap growing. He's going to try to line up the 69 and run it up underneath him right there. Same move he made oh, he stood earlier. Him up. He, had to, he stood him up a little bit. Eslick had to give him room. I tell you, this guy, when he's on, he's on, man. And you give him a little bit of room, he'll take that spot. But, man, that, that triumph's quick. He's going to try the over-under move down here on the brakes on Westby. Westby's got to be strong right here. And you're looking at the future of American Superbike, and the future is good, and business is good here at Mid-O right now. Oh, now these two up front. They don't know what's coming, but I think but we do. Coming, we, can, we can see it. So now if Westby can keep it clean, has no more problems from behind, I think he can close this gap. Garrett Gerloff riding along back there, just watching all this action up in front of him. There's a good look at the Riders Discount Triumph Daytona 675. A bike that has impressed us all with its um, low end torque and horsepower in this one. The bike handles good. It's a triple cylinder, so the bike's going to go left to right. A little bit, a little bit easier than the inline four cylinder motorcycles. It seems to have good speed. Just looks like maybe he missed the hit on the setup somewhere because he's losing that little bit of time to these guys. Over time, we have come to learn that uh, number 85, Jake Lewis, is a very intelligent rider. He's a patient man when he needs to be. Right now, I do think he's given it about everything that he's got to keep the 32 in tow, but I also think that perhaps we could see a, a pass for the lead before this one is over, and that spot is just totally up for grabs right now, but Westby's got a good grip on it at the moment. Well, you know he can smell blood in the water. He got that win last weekend, and when you do that, get that first one, Man, that's all you want. You want more and more of that, but the 32's got his own ideas. Gagne's having a, an excellent year, no doubt about it. For a moment, Lewis looked on the inside, really liked to have taken the spot. Chosen to remain uh, number two in the order right now as Eslick tries the long, hard high line around uh, on the double zeros of Westby, but he wasn't able to get it done. Well, unfortunately for Westby, I thought he might have something for him, but in turn, they lost about a, over half a second on that last lap to the leader. So uh, Westby may be struggling with something out there on the motorcycle, but right now not able to match the pace of the two guys up front. So right now, they'll be, it'll be five to go when they come back to the stripe. And at the moment, it is Gagne, Lewis, Westby, Eslick, and Beach at the top, your top five. Six through 10, Gerloff, DeSalvo, Fong, Blake Young, and Jake Zimke. Rounding out your top 10, Kyle Wyman has slipped back to the 11th spot. He ran up front for a while, ran up in the top five, but right now number 33 out of the top 10, back in the 11th spot as the laps are winding down. Great camera angle right there. We haven't seen that yet. They make their way up into the turn two, three, up into that keyhole area. These two right here have really settled in, Barry, and they've got a great pace going right now, and nobody behind them is able to run that that 28 mid, 28 pace right now to really keep up with them. They're the only ones in the 28s. The rest of the guys behind them are in the 29 range, and that's what you're seeing right now. Westby trying his move here on the triumph of Eslick. Eslick able to, under the braking duel, able to hang on to the spot. Well, I don't have Jake Lewis up here. I can't get inside of his head as we watch this great battle between Eslick and Westby. But what do you think Jake Lewis has got on his mind? He seems to be content right now. Ooh. 
he wasn't content. And that just changed. He said, <laughs> well, that, uh, now I think you know what's on his mind. He wants to lead it from the front, wants to win it from the front. Probably doesn't want to leave it down to the last couple laps. I mean, you, you never know what happens when you try to leave it to the end of the race. A solo rider can get in the way. All kind of things can happen. Sometimes it's best to get out front and try to, to make it happen from there. Okay, so now that's past tense. Uh, now we know what he was thinking for sure, as you said. And it's funny, we looked away for about four or five seconds to that battle for third, and everything changed up front, changed in a hurry, and he's beginning to put a little bit of a gap here on the 32 of Gagne. Well, like you said, after coming off that win, they definitely got that thing working well. Talking about Danny Essay back in the third spot now, maybe he felt like West was slowing him down. You see DeSalvo running a lonely back there, coming out of turn one by himself. But this, this battle for for third place has really closing up now, Barry. A bright Gerloff back there uh, in that battle as well. And behind Gerloff is, uh, I, it was DeSalvo. I'm not really sure. Is it Bobby Fong? It's J.D. Beach's teammate. It's the oh, two there you go. Yamaha extended service bikes running right on the rear wheel of double zero. Double zero looks like he's losing some speed down that back straightaway. You can hear Essley downshifting quickly going into the corner right there. Gerloff makes the move on Westby. Down that back straight. Doesn't look like the double zero's got full power. Doesn't look like he's got the speed of the other bikes, and that allowed um, Gerloff to get down the inside, make the outbreaking move pretty easily, really, into turn six. It will be three to go when they get back to the line. Whatever you've got, now's the time to begin showing it because three laps is all you're going to have to get you some here at Mid Ohio. He had a moment right there out of the saddle. Um, he's good in this area, this area of the racetrack, which is more the rider area. But when they hit that little back straightaway, unfortunately, it just looks like they're able to drive around him. Um, so his hands are kind of tied right now. And you can see Essex as he gaps uh, Gerloff a little bit as they dive into turn one. Not much in it. Don't think he's, they're never going to run that lead or lead pack down. Those two guys are gone. That race is for third. So they're going to have to settle it amongst themselves for who's going to stand atop the box here. And right now, Gagne has reasserted his uh, skill sets. He's back at the top of the order. That'll relegate the 85 to the two spot. These two just keep flexing up on each other. And basically, is what they're doing. And, and uh, you know, neither one of them want to be in second spot, obviously, because they keep swapping the lead. Um, all these guys in third look like they can hope for is maybe those two guys come together and make a huge mistake and that blows the race wide open and allows somebody else to win it. But as it looks, it's going to be one of the two Jakes. It looks like they're going to win this one. And the question that remains is which one of the two Jakes is going to be at top and which one is going to be in second. And then you've got this battle where they're still trying to decide who is going to be third on the podium here this afternoon and GoPro Daytona Sport Bike. Right now, Eslick looks as good to me as he has looked all race long. Yeah, he has, he's been solid. You know, he's kind of run his own race. He wasn't able to go with the leaders, but uh, had to deal with Westby there for a little bit. And now he's going to have to deal with Gerloff next. But Essex strong, man, and, and mentally strong, and he'll fight back. If somebody passes him, you can be sure he'll come right back at you. He was getting the power down that time, a little bit of wheel spin, but that's all good. Well, these two guys just look really clean out there right now as they're coming into some of the lap traffic. Uh, this rider super going super slow, got out of the way, no problem. Um, we can only hope that the rest of the field, as they catch them, will be the same. So many times in races, lap traffic plays and out can play in the outcome of the, of the finish of the race. Right now, we just want these two guys to finish it themselves. And that's what's going to happen here. And uh, as they come back to the line, they will be presented with a white flag. And they'll know at that point, they know right now that they've only got, after this lap, they've got one more lap to decide who is going to win race number one for GoPro Daytona Sport Bike right now, number 32. The Road Race Factory star is up front, but Jake Lewis is so in the game right now. These guys are very evenly matched, Scott. They really are. So Jake Gagne has just got to keep his head down and ride as hard as he can and try not to make one little mistake because that's all it's going to take with Jake Lewis running all over him. I mean, it's just a little minute mistake is going to cost him. And we've seen these guys pass one another multiple times during this race when perhaps the rider in front did not even make a mistake, just a well-timed, well-placed move. And we're gonna be watching for that. 
blue flag here for some of the uh, slower a slower rider now the white flag and it's on headed down to turn number one scott russell for the final time with gagne leading the 85 of jake lewis well they're gonna be catching this rider in a tricky spot as they get up here to turn two three area maybe they, this rider will get through the keyhole before they get on him and it won't affect their drive but right now he's gonna go wide nice move to recognize that blue flag, that could not be any better for these leaders. Well-timed, he's uh, made the gentlemanly sportsmanship-like move and got completely out of the way. And these guys are on, and they know what that it's all on the line here. Gagne's gonna have to cover the inside right now. He's gotta play defense. He's gotta go low. Gagne, uh, uh, Lewis is gonna go even lower, Barry, right now, and make that move. Will he run it wide? And he does, and Gagne fights back on the inside, but that sets him up perfectly for the left hand. And look how close those machines are here, Scott. Watch him down in here. Lewis is so strong. I thought for sure Gagne would have a run at him right there. He didn't, wasn't able to get the throttle on early enough. There's still somewhere to, to make a move left. Wow, total focus by these two young professionals here as they know it's all coming down to uh, one more, perhaps, opportunity to make something happen. Number 85, the motosport.com rider, Jake Lewis, leading the Road Race Factory. Number 32, Gagne. Boy, what a great job by Lewis to cover that up. And we've still got the battle for third going on back there that'll come into our camera view here as they come to the line, and it is a done deal. And here's our battle for third as it comes across the stripe as well. I think that's Eslick uh, who won that one held on to that spot. So Jake Gagne will take that race win. Jake Lewis having to settle for a two spot finish. Eight, five, three, two and, and 69. So it's Jake Lewis, your race winner uh, at the stripe. So well played by Jake Lewis right there. He meant business on that one. And you know, that's just how it goes sometimes. You feel like you can win it from the front, but Jake Lewis had his plan in mind. He, he executed it perfectly and there was nothing Gagne could do to fight back on such a tight race track. They both ran a great race, but I guarantee you, Gagne will have different ideas when that flag drops this afternoon. Number 85, Jake Lewis has done it. It was a strategic battle right to the finish, and he overtook Gagne to take the race win. <laughs> Let's go down trackside to Danielle, who's got a very excited team owner. That's right, Barry, I'm here with Amin Sejati. Amin, congratulations, two wins in a row at the premier racetrack, Laguna Seca, and again here in mid-Ohio, congratulations. Thank you very much, yeah, Jake rode a great race, Jake. <laughs> Jake and Jake both rode a great race, and it feels good to get two in a row. We're right there in the championship. Uh, my hat's off to the whole team, Gary Dean, Keaton, Mean Motorsports, Motorsport.com, Chuck Graves, and Yamaha. Everyone did a great job, and all the support got us this far. So looking forward to the second race. Wow, great job. Thank you, Danielle. Well played, well timed. I mean, very excited, Scott. They've won two back-to-back -back here. How big is that? It's huge right now when you look at the points right now that we're talking about because Jake Lewis came in here five points behind Jake Gagne. That's going to change now, and that really tightens up that championship battle. Danny Eslick coming across in third. Those are the top three in your championship points, and they've just finished one, two, three, so things are tied at the top in DSB. Wow, that's just race number one of the day, the doubleheader day that we're doing here. We have yet another GoPro Daytona uh, Sport Bike Contest coming up here this afternoon. That one to take place at 2.45 p.m. As to the victors go, the spoils, our top three finishers on their way to victory podium. Jake Lewis, your race winner today for the Motosport.com Mean Motorsports team. Number 32, Jake Gagne for the Road Race Factory Red Bull team. And Danny Eslick, consistently strong uh, here late in the season. Number 69 for the Riders Discount team. And now with that, it looks to me as if it's time to throw it down trackside to Danielle. She's got uh, Jake Lewis as he arrives on the scene. Here's Danielle Teal. Actually, I'm going to go with third place here today. Danny Eslick, he's got his helmet off. He's ready to go. Danny, you look like that was a hard-fought race. You're all smiles, though. Congratulations on another podium finish. Still in the fight for the championship. Oh, I was good. Westby's trying to be a hero and kind of screwed me on uh, going with these lead pack. Uh, you know, he's my buddy and all at home, but, you know, when it's, uh, the helmets are on, it's uh, go time. But I don't didn't have, a, didn't have the bike for it and was trying to override it. So, I don't know. Riders discount triumph. Uh, just thank you. Appreciate it. Have fun. Yeehaw. 
Congratulations, third place, Danny S. Like, let's go over to second place, looking for Jake Gagne. There he is over there. A hard fought battle the entire race with the other Jake, Jake Lewis. Congratulations on second place, still in the still in the hunt for the championship. Yeah, it was it was a good race. Uh, kind of got out for JD. He was riding really good in the beginning. Jake and Danny and all those guys, and then I uh, tried to lead the thing and and pull away a little bit. And uh, Jake was just on my butt the whole time. And uh, yeah, I just that was just a bad last lap by me. And he got up the inside. But hey, we got another race this afternoon. Try to get another crack at it. Try to get a win. Congratulations, second place, number 32, Jake Gagne. And we're going to make our way over to the winner here today, Jake Lewis, number 85, a hard fought race where you put a move on him in the final lap to go ahead and take the thing. Another win after your win at Laguna Seca. Congratulations. How does it feel? Oh, yeah, you know, this one's pretty huge, too. Uh, you know, last week was my first weekend at Laguna, my first win, and uh, put it all together then. And then I came into this track with a lot of confidence. You know, I don't really go well to here. And, uh, you know, just put a good solid race together, got off to a good start and uh, was behind JD for a few laps and I feel like I had a little bit more pace so he went through and then uh, when I was following Jake, his tire looked like it was going off so I just was staying right there until the last lap and then I was really good on the brakes and uh, you know it's just huge to get this second win in a row and uh, be tied for the points lead but you know we have another one later on this afternoon so uh, but I can't thank my whole motorsport.com me and Yamaha crew enough they put together a great bike we've been working well together this year and uh, we're just keep fighting and trying to chase wins thank you everyone there you have it top three Barry back to you guys